to a new segment here at Alley Oop, Around the Horn. I'm your host for the day, Phil Tony Reale Ledzinski. I'm excited and albeit a little nervous to try this segment out today. However, we have three very impressive guests on the show, John Markwart, Ethan Grayub, and Nick Regal, and they are coming in with some supposedly scalding hot takes for you guys. Gentlemen, would you like to induce yourselves, introduce yourselves to the audience? Yeah. Uh, my name is Ethan Grayab, currently here in Fiji on spring break with uh, the family. Uh, this is my third year as a basketball insider here on Wolverine Alley Oop, and I'm um, planning to take the win in the first Around the Horn segment. I'm John. I'm here in my home Chrysler Center as the Maze Rage superfan. I don't really leave this place, so I'm glad that they got the opportunity to bring a camera down here and get me in my natural habitat. I'm Nick Greigel. I am coming at you live from Fort Collins, Colorado, the fort. And uh, really, this is my first time on the show, so I'm just excited to be here, and I hope I do well. Perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. And let's get right into, t into today's questions, then. First of all, who was the most preposterously overrated team in this year's NCAA tournament? Ethan, let's start with you. Oh, the most overrated team got to be Marquette. They got it handed to them in the first round by Murray State and Ja Morant. Uh, just an absolute trash team. Marcus Howard is a trash player. Uh, any NBA team that was thinking about drafting him is definitely not thinking that anymore because how bad can one player be when he's supposedly good? And Marquette just made complete fools of themselves in the first round of this year's tournament. All right, let's move it on over to John. Ethan, that was a spicy way to start out the show today. It's an interesting way to start, going off with a five seed as being the most overrated team. I got to go with Duke. Number one overall seed in the tournament comes in and they were one possession away from the elite, from the final four you know it's great but they didn't look good in any of their games cam reddish cannot shoot the ball rj barrett loves himself some hero ball nobody else on the team is worth mentioning besides zion he's great whatever couldn't carry them to a win struggled against ucf struggled against virginia tech got beat by michigan state that's just unforgivable duke sucks <laughs> perfect i like that one a little bit better and uh, we'll give it to our last guy for today for this uh segment nick so you guys are going here with one team that's overrated, but really there's a lot of teams that are very overrated. I mean, we had a five seed reach the final four, so that's at least 16 teams that just didn't belong at all where they were. And honestly, it's just unbelievable they were even placed in the tournament at all. <laughs> well, it's kind of tough to say that 16 teams when they only had to win two games to get to that position that you're speaking on. So I'm not sure I agree with that point, Nick, but regardless, we'll move on to our next question. Countering that last question, who was the most underrated team in this tournament? Well, it's a, one, there's only one answer here. Oregon, a 12 seed. They won the Pac-12 tournament. You've got to be kidding me, giving them a 12 seed. That, they were a 5 seed at worst. This was a complete choke job by the NCAA tournament committee. I cannot even believe, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw them. A 12 seed in Virginia's region of all places. This has got to be a joke. Come on, man. Give my ducks some respect. You're really going to try to give Oregon some respect when they're not even still in the tournament? I mean, it's kind of hard to call them the most underrated team Dude, in the tournament when they've already lost. They made it this far without their best player, one of the best players in college basketball history, Bull Bull. This has got to be a complete joke from you, Nick, too. Okay, you probably first of all, love Come on, them. Ethan. They didn't start playing basketball until March. That's why they were a 12 seed. They won the Pac 12 tournament. That's the only good thing they the did. The best all year. teams played their basketball in March. Okay. Not to mention, yeah, which, still which teams not in the Pac 12 did they even beat to win the conference tournament? Like, the Pac 12 is. Arguably the worst big conference in it's basketball. It's not arguably. <laughs> yeah, arguably. that's okay. I'm, Factually, I, yes, they are the Look, worst. let's just get down to the real answer here. And the only answer is Texas Tech. They've been playing like the best team in the country, and it's kind of ridiculous that they were a three seed in the tournament. Okay. okay, yeah, I can respect that. Texas Tech, especially after beating Michigan. I mean, Michigan is arguably the best team in the tournament in, in a lot of people's eyes. That's so a I weird mean, argument. Getting you blown <laughs> out by Texas Tech, you know, they might be the best team of all time in the NCAA. <laughs> Here's right, my scalding then. hot take for the day. And, I uh, don't know how any of you guys can go with any team but Auburn here. I mean, yeah, Texas Tech's great. They're a three seed in the Final Four. Guess what's lower than a three seed? A five seed. Auburn came out and torched all the blue bloods. <laughs> Dude, boys. your math is incredible, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, but who did Auburn have to beat? Auburn came out and there. torched I mean, the blue bloods of the Dude, entire Carolina? Auburn wouldn't have got Kentucky? out of the first round if New Mexico State had but they did, for the other players. They did. They did. And then they beat they Kansas. They, they beat UNC. They Texas beat Tech was able to stop two of the, the best offenses in the field. Okay, Texas Tech beat the best team in NCAA history, the Michigan Wolverines, according to Phil. Yeah, why are we listening to Phil? So this is just more points for me. 
No not, points for you. Not to mention the Wolverines started 17 and 0 this year. I don't and know how you could possibly say they were overrated. What did we finish? They're not the greatest team overrated. in the world. Sorry, Auburn is. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. More specific to Michigan this time. Do you think that this season was a failure or a success for the Wolverines? Uh, let's switch it up. Start with Nick. I, I got to be honest, it, it was a failure. I mean, some people have called them the best team in the history of the NCAA this year, and they didn't win anything, really. They won a lot of games, but they weren't able to get any of the banners, not the regular season championship, not the tournament championship, not a Final Four. They were a very good team, but overall, this, this year was definitely a failure. Gentlemen, you have anything to add on to that? I mean, come on. This oh, I have a lot to add on Michigan to that. Basketball. Calling this season a failure is just messed up. You know, for Michigan basketball fans that have been here through the dark ages of the 2000s, a Sweet 16 is never a failure. Sorry, good is that the standard that we're going with Yes, now? that is a good Here's standard. Here's the thing, we're not in the 2000s That is a good anymore. standard. We're in the Sweet 2010s. Let's get, let's get Ethan out of here for a second. That is just such a regurgitated take. We hold Michigan basketball to a higher standard than that. The Sweet 16 is not necessarily enough to consider this a good season. John, what do you have to say about that? I agree with Nick that it is a failure, but I have a different reason. Yes, the wins and losses were one thing. My issue is that this is a failure because nobody on this team really progressed that much. Jordan Poole was supposed to take a huge step forward this year. He didn't. None of the freshmen outside of Iggy did anything notable all season. Um, Xavier Simpson, good season, good season. Definitely a little bit of a step back, at least defensively. I mean, he's great, but he couldn't lock up Cassius Winston this year, and that's the reason we didn't beat Michigan State, is it not? I mean, this team definitely could have reached a lot higher if they would have progressed a few more players on this team and it was disappointing to see them fold when the pressure came on late in the season. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can definitely agree with that. I think you've made some good points. You and Nick both saying that Michigan season is a failure is definitely a fair, a fair conclusion. Ethan, on the other hand, you know, if they're making it to the Sweet 16 over 50% of the time in the last seven years, it's hard to say that you, know, you can consider that a successful season. So um, not just because of that, but we're going to move on to our final question with just two guys remaining. And I'm going to have to leave Ethan out of the final round. I'm sorry, Ethan, but there will certainly be another Around the Horn segment for you to participate in in the future. Enjoy the rest of your vacation with your family and uh, have a drink for me. Let's move on to the final question for the last two. Which non-seniors do you guys think will be leaving the team this offseason? Well, I think it's kind of an interesting leading to the question considering there weren't any seniors on the team. So uh, the, the most obvious one, Charles Matthews has been itching to go to the pros for years now, and it's very, it's looking extremely likely that he will be leaving for the pros. So that's definitely the most obvious one. Another one, there's probably going to be some transfers. Austin Davis, it's starting to look difficult for him to find any playing time. So really, he's kind of, those are kind of the main two, and I wouldn't be too surprised to see anyone else leave. Anyone else, really, on the entire roster? You wouldn't anyone be surprised else. if anyone stayed, stuck around. Okay, John, you have a counter to that argument? Um, I mean, he pretty much put it pretty well with those, but I think he left a few people out. I do think that Austin Davis is going to have to leave. He's going to fall behind on the big man chart real quick. It's not great, to be honest with you. I love Austin, but I don't think he has a spot here in the future. Charles definitely is going to go. He doesn't have a whole lot to do here. He's probably not going to improve his draft stock much as he stays. He's definitely gone. I think that Jordan Poole and Iggy are at least going to test the draft waters this year, go to the combine, see what they can do. I think that Iggy might end up leaving. I think Jordan will end up staying. And I think that it's possible that you see Eli Brooks leave as well. His minutes dwindled as the season went on. He kind of surged a little bit in the NCAA tournament, but that was basically getting two minutes a game, maybe two points a game. And I just think that he might have to go somewhere else. There's still just no one to bring in to take Eli's minutes. So, I mean, we have a few freshmen that could get it, but the only one that really plays that position is the Julius, maybe uh, Nunez, but he's more of a three. So it's kind of difficult to uh, say that Eli is going to go and we don't have anyone to take those minutes. You see, that's where I'm not sure that you're right there because I know that John Beeline has been looking into a few grad transfers. I think that he could look into a guard, maybe a combo guard, to take some minutes from Xavier so he's not playing 37 minutes a game and also taking a few of the minutes at the two. I think that's a huge possibility similar to how Jerron Simmons came in to push Xavier. And I think that's a really, very, very, very great possibility for uh, Beeline to look at. But you're going to bring in a grad transfer that has to learn the whole system when you already have someone who has been improving some a little bit every year in Eli Brooks. It just seems ridiculous. I mean, I didn't Minor say that Eli was going to get forced out. I said he was going to leave. It kind of sounds like you're making him leave. you got to think that Eli's ceiling is pretty low at this point. So I, I feel like John might be onto something there. Eli, although he might not lead another team to the March, March Madness or even the Sweet 16, but I think... Uh, I think that's definitely a possibility that we'll lose Eli, although losing him compared to Charles Matthews or Iggy or Jordan Poole probably wouldn't, wouldn't hurt as badly. 
Um, for that reason, uh, we're going to end today's show right about now, our inaugural Around the Horn segment. And I'm going to have to give the first ever victory of this segment to John Mark Ward. Super confident with his takes today. Um, you know, pretty creative, although he was also accurate. Just a nice combination of everything that you could have asked for from an Around the Horn contestant. Not to take away from what Nick or Ethan gave to us. I think everyone put forth their best effort, and I'm proud of you guys. And uh, that's all we're going to do for today. So catch us next week for another groundbreaking episode of Alley Oop.